I am so sick of these third-rate scripts. I'm sick of that bloke as well. I wonder if players two would want to become players three. I'll, I'll ping them over an email. Oh, hey, oh, oh God! Oh God! He's coming. Hey! Hey! Great script. Hello and welcome to the Unofficial Controller Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast, episode 19, the Gamescom 2019 preview. With me, George, and as always joined by Tom, new father, to my bit of, how's your father? <laughs> how's it going? I'm well, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm glad to have you back. Thank you. I think you, uh, a round of applause for your solo effort, Han Solo. Um, you did a good job in my in my uh, stead. I did. I was up to your <coughs> high standard, was I? You were. Yeah. Thank you, uh, listeners, as well for the kind messages uh, that you all sort of sent with the with my sort of current news and situation in life. Tom, um, I tell you what, we're back on the show. We don't want to yeah. get illusions of grandeur or anything. No, we've been away. No, no. So just to help you remember and the wave, <laughs> because yeah, we've had another wave of new listeners. Uh, why don't you let them know how the show breaks down? Uh, so we kick off with uh, the what have we been playing. I ask you and you ask me. Nice. And then we go right into the news where we look for uh, all the latest stories over the internet. Um, and then we go into the feature, which is like the meat and veg of the show. The big main attraction that you all hopefully come for. <laughs> but we lie because you all come for the next part of the show, which is Stingray's Boot. Listener uh, Stingray. Well, listener Stingray, yeah. Don't dare desecrate the holy ground. And then the man himself rocks up and he's got uh, the uh, selection of new releases. Stingray's boot. Yeah. And, and then, then what we, happens? We close the show out with uh, asking each other what we're hoping to play for the next week. That's very interesting. Tom, yeah. well, off the back of that, first lesson in life, what have you been playing? So... Um, Obviously not had quite as much time recently, but the Switch has come into its own and I've been playing the new Fire Emblem Three Houses, which uh, is a great sort of tactical RPG game. I've played a few of the others in the series, but this one's the first one on a on a Nintendo home co- console since I think the Wii game, uh, Radiant Dawn. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really good. Um, I'm roughly about 25 hours in. Um, you take on the role of a of a new professor teacher at um, Garog Mo- Monastery, uh, which is a bit like a Hogwarts sort of setting, and you get to choose from one of the three houses, um, and you you take that class and you can uh, do all the teaching. It reminds me a bit of Persona, which uh, I know you're uh, you sort of quite a fan of. I like that, um, and it's it's got that sort of it's not so much of a grind because you have you, you played always, Persona. Um, I've looked at uh, a playthrough because I've been. I looked, I, I, I I looked in, at a box once. Yeah, I looked at a box once. <laughs> um, but no, from from your feedback and from what I've seen, it it does um, ring true with a lot of those sort of uh, how you build your characters and you do your day to day life. Um, you'd be better but, off getting. You'd be best off just getting five from the. We digress. Yeah. Fire Emblem Three. <clears throat> yeah, really, really impressed with it. It's very addictive. Uh, like I say. It doesn't feel so much of a grind. You're kind of building your characters up and you feel like your class is getting stronger with you in charge and you take them out into battle. Uh, the the battle sort of setup looks a lot better now. It's on a home console. Um, the character models look more 3D. It's like a cel-shaded art style as well um, for, for people wanting to know what it looks like. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's no sort of uh, powerhouse display, um, but... It certainly makes it feel a lot more like a battlefield rather than just sort of what moving around. Two D, three D, come on! It's uh, in the fans, Tom. Give them the facts. Don't give them this warbly story. Yeah, so what's it look like? Nuts and bolts. Three uh, D action, I suppose. Um, you can zoom out, so it's more like a sort of chessboard uh, display. Mm-hmm. Then you can zoom in, and it's almost like uh, like a real time strategy. Um, kind of display so you can see all the units and and the leaders oh, of those units this is right up your street isn't it oh it certainly is um 
but yeah, I, I would recommend that to any Fire Emblem fans, definitely. What, uh, what else have you been playing? Uh, don't answer that. In yeah, fact, yes, you know what's coming. We've got we've had some new raffle prizes in, so I'm prepared. Get ready. I'm Get ready. ready to give away. Um, yeah, I've been on Overwatch. Any Overwatch fans know that uh, Roll Ooh. Queue has come into play, which forces uh, two two two, which we discussed in the Boba news. Boba Lobas won yeah. a bottle of rosé. Has he? Yes. A fine, fine drink for him. Uh, it's uh, yeah. at least three months old. Does he like a sparkling rosé though? Do you reckon? It's, or is he? It's whatever's on there from the wagon and horses. Okay. It's he probably, doesn't do. He doesn't do fancy drinks down there. It's does probably rosé because it's the wine slop tray <laughs> rebottled. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, congratulations, Boba Lava. Yeah. Well done. Good effort. Good effort. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, got the uh, Sigma is the new hero as well on Overwatch. So I've been playing a bit of him. He's a new tank shield main. Uh, yeah, that's roughly what I've been playing the past couple of weeks. Um, George, what have you been playing? Oh, now, Tom, move out Sit down the way. and pull up a chair by the fire. Pro side. gamer, sit down and pull up a chair. He's finished some games. So f- <laughs> oh, er, er, er. <laughs> I'm the one on the show that finishes the games. Uh, so I finished Yakuza Kiwami 1 and already launched deep into 2. That game, Tom, I mean, I can't even be... It's very Japanese, all right, I'll admit that, but it's... For all the ridiculousness that goes along with that game, that story, I felt, was really quite good and it's launched into 2 in a very good way. Lots of little, like, sort of refinements made in 2 just to make the process a bit nicer and some extra animations and things when you're interacting with the side stories which is good uh, Minecraft been on that obviously I have look um, at all that merch in the corner I've been and got all the I've got a dirt block and uh, yeah I've gone full Minecraft I've even got goodly toys as Tom's what trying to what is the before. weird looking alien if thing? you don't know what an Enderman is you are no longer a friend of the podcast you I, I, I could never <clears throat> do the podcast without you so you know I have to choose my words carefully here because obviously couldn't survive. Well, according on the to own. fan feedback, you can do the show on your own. Mm. <laughs> Commiseration is not congratulation. Um, very true. Anyway, so I've done a bit of that. So now I'm on to Kiwami 2, which I'm looking forward to because I've never played that on PS2 and I own it. So this has been my first time of even looking at it so I'm very mm-hmm. excited with that and thoroughly enjoying it like I say the nice to have functionality <coughs> of change is great uh, and what else have I been playing have you uh, have you been back to Judgment at all or I haven't played Judgment yet oh I you haven't saved it. it no yeah, yeah. Okay. the thing is I we often talk of the palate cleanser and yeah. I finished uh, Kiwami 1 and, and put it, it doesn't tie into I put two, uh, Yakuza no, at all no not no. at all but okay. I was I wanted a palate cleanser, but not one that literally was the same taste as the thing I've been... Because it's set in the same area. Yes. It's got the yeah. same distractions. It's got the same shops. Yeah. I didn't want to go down that route and then not finish Guami 2. I wanted to just try and keep focused. I didn't tell you that I was uh, on my own when I achieved this, but I finished Days Gone as well. Did you mention that last week? Yeah, but you weren't here. Okay. What we well, say to I'll, each... I'll, I'll, well, I'll hang on. You. We'll just hang on. Okay. Because I finished it more than you. Have you? So your You've claims... been checking those stats. Yes, comparison. your claims of being the game I finished <coughs> games. George, how many... What was it? <sighs> Six-month game in year in review? How many of these games have you even played, George? I've finished them all. <laughs> <laughs> I chop you down like wheat in the field at summertime. <laughs> you are nothing to me. I am a gamer. Arise, Lord Gamer. Uh, Rise, Tom. I think that at eight minutes, nine minutes, we're pushing it. Yeah, Maybe we've we rambled. To... We better move on. Let's let's give them some facts. Let's go to the news. We've scoured the very darkest regions of the internet to bring you the latest stories. Tom, first up. Uh, first up, we've got uh, our source downtown. La Noir VR case files. It's heading to the PS4 and PS VR. Already out for Vive and Oculus, but uh, a slipped age rating suggests this reworked VR title will be coming to PSVR soon. It's featuring seven cases re- rebuilt specifically for virtual reality. L.A. Noir, the VR case files, adds new layers of immersion and realism to Rockstar Games' atmospheric crime thriller, 
is you solve select cases from blockbus from the Blockbuster original game, spanning mysteries from detective desks or traffic, arson and homicide and more. So are those um cases that are already in the game? Um and then you're you are Yeah. I'm reading it. You forgot the last bit. Oh, will you be slipping into Cole's shoes when this gets a release? So if you read the script, and I could then have said, mm. yes. Yes, I am. Because I've got a PSVR, and my love for L.A. Noir runs so deep, like a ravine. Mediocre. Don't ever say that about that game. When you finished it. You called it the best World War Two game ever. The best World War Two game ever made. Show me a better oh, one. Oh, maybe I have to have a look at that one. You need though. to. You need to. Do you want to take the next one? Are you going to... Let's let's put the fans out of their misery. Are you going to get a PSVR and pick up LA Noir VR case files? Well, there's something coming very, very, very soon that has made me intrigued in PSVR, which you're going to be talking about later. I can see you barely can contain the excitement for that. Well, so I want this to be a... I, Oscar, I'm sorry, but this is going to be a 10-minute show because <laughs> we've already overran because I want to kick Tom out and then I want to do the podcast business, ASAP, and then I want to get on No Man's... Oh. Save it. We've teased. Let's do the next bit. In Move news. on. The wait is finally over. Rio Azuki were... Well, kind of. Or if you've got a 486 gaming PC anyways... So YSNet will release the Kickstarter and Slacker backers in the second half of September. The developer announced the access to the Shenmue 3 demo or trial version and that will feature a standalone act set in Beilu Village. The game will be playable for an estimated one hour but will be replayable once your objective has been cleared. Saves will not transfer <coughs> over to the final version. So Tom, get the green screen fired up. I will do. Get the anti-static wipes on the screen. <laughs> D nicotine stain the keyboard yeah it, I think a keyboard would work well on Shemmy with all those very like drawn out actions of like open the drawer can you remove... imagine imagine this a QTE <laughs> but not with just the four face buttons <laughs> with the whole keyboard with the whole keyboard <laughs> <laughs> as we move closer to that uh, game's release uh, on November 19th how do you feel about it? Are you going to be picking it up day one? We've well, waited for so long. It the, almost seems well, like... The answer's well, yes. Yeah. But when I... I already know, unless a deity himself descends into the disc burning suite at Sega or wherever, Sony, and then its actual presence infiltrates the disc, we were, we're going to be very disappointed. The Do graphics look terrible. It's not bad for a Kickstarter game, though, I don't think. It has improved a lot. Yeah, but it, it, it's not a Kickstarter game. Sony chuck money at it. Yeah, but a lot of it's, kick, a lot of it's crap. It's a proper it, game. It? Yeah, yeah, I know. It does feel like we've been waiting for that so long. That I think they knew it was going to be terrible, gonna... so if they make out, it's, oh, well, it's not bad for something that a load of black kids have made in the shed on a budget of two pounds. <laughs> like, that's not an excuse for this game. No. We've waited this long... Why have we accepted to get mugged off by a third-rate knockoff? I think what worries me more than anything with it is we're still not going to have that definitive ending by the sounds of it. I no. think it's going to be another long tease for the next one. Maybe when you finish it and the credits finish and it just gives you a little web page to go to to fund for. <laughs> Maybe so. I think uh, the other thing as well is it's been a long time since I've played one and two. Well, with all my... And I don't I feel the urge to revisit this, them. But I I almost popped in the remake the remaster of yeah. one and two as my palate cleanser from Yakuza, but I thought to be fair That is not gonna stack up well. There's mm. only there's probably only so many hanging around in arcades buying things out of toy car arcade machines and uh drinking pop mm. in game. That's not really a palate cleanser, I'm just gonna do it all again. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a that was a no. Surely, Tom we're the we're the most mediocre show in the business, so surely we've gone for that trifecta of news. What's that third little ditty you've got for us? So last up, we've got Microsoft will play nicely with others, just not with its most favourite toys. According to uh, Matt Booty, head of Xbox Game Studios... Do you know, I've heard... Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he gets all his collecting done on a Sunday and Saturday morning. Down the car booty. 
Mm. <laughs> you are slick. Um, I think we would, said Booty, when asked by Game Informer if the studios would allow multi-platform releases of their new games. Booty went on to stress that it would work only for their smaller games, Cuphead on Switch being a great example. When pushed for PS4 releases, he went on to say, does it make sense for the franchise to be there? Well, uh, Mr. Booty, we hope it makes sense for a lot of them to be yeah, shared what out. Would you, what would um, you... You're currently in the PlayStation ecosystem. Yeah. What title on God's green earth would actually make you go, oh, wow, I'm glad they're releasing that more before. Uh, Ori and the Blind Forest, not a massive IP for them, but still one that I'd like to see on the PS4 or the Switch. Um, you look at me, gone out. What, what even is that? Wow. Is he finishes games. Game studio? He finishes games, but does he know what they are? <sighs> wow! It is. Um, yeah, it's like M- a metro. More the full people that tuned into this to our opinion. No, he knows his stuff. He's a man of facts. He's a man of great research and. Facts. Given half hour with the internet, he can make a fat field load of nonsense about anything. Heck, he can well, the script this chaos. week comes fresh out of. Uh, a new young hot playwright in the, town. The, the poet laureate of the <laughs> podcast. Uh, yeah, so Ori in the Blind Forest, Cuphead on PS4 would be good. I don't think we're going, we're never going to see like four. Do you think we're he's, not going to see four? Is Zerari. he actually pre- preparing? Preparing? Is he actually preparing the ground for? Like, a lot of these Microsoft game studios they've bought have already got games that are coming out or have come out already on multi-format. Hellblade sent to a sacrifice. Yeah. Outer Worlds will be releasing. Yeah. Is this his way of saying, actually, if there is a route to market where we're going to do two-thirds as many on this platform or that platform, it makes sense, in his words, for the franchise to be there? I think that's a really good sum up of, of what he's trying to say there actually so I'm Good I'm work. I'm the anchor man that holds it together and you're yeah. the guy with the opinions and the knowledge about the industry that's how it works that's but how it we've works. switched roles boom yeah. so you now hold the show together and you cut to me every 30 seconds and I go oh yeah everyone knows about that game <laughs> should we try that fake knowledge did we miss anything though listeners uh, do you have an opinion fake knowledge do we have an opinion <laughs> or take on the news we missed Tom if so, how they get in contact with us? You weren't here last week, so I got to mention the gag that you don't like me to repeat about having all the contact details stitched on the jumper. I know by the fact that I'm mentioning it, not mentioning it, by saying that I'm not mentioning it, I'm mentioning it. I can see your ire building. This fire inside you. Uh, so I didn't mention the jumper laid out on the floor with all the uh, contact details. I can just it. make it out from here. So you can direct messages. You acknowledged messages. it's real? It's real. Perfect. Okay. Um, freshly knitted. What were by, we asking? Uh, by Mumsy. Um, Unroll it properly. Look, Carrier oh Pigeon. Oh She's put it okay. on there while you've been Carrier on. Pigeon contact <laughs> now available. Uh, right. So you can reach us at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com, uh, which the script was emailed through on this week. Uh, so a great use for us as well. Uh, direct yeah. messages on Instagram or Twitter. Most of you do it on Instagram. That and uh, Bill from the news agents. Yeah. Uh, you can follow our and subscribe to our YouTube channel, which I, uh, we really implore you to do if you don't already, um, which we're hopefully trying to build up a bit more, aren't we? Get the YouTube channel. I don't think anyone who listens goes to the YouTube channel. Because if it did, we'd have a hell of a lot more viewers on yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> we, do, we do get most, most of it through the the uh, Spotify and if iTunes, you, isn't If it? you dig on the stats on YouTube, though, a lot of the views come from non-subscribed people. Oh, yeah. Like, before this podcast, did you have a YouTube login? No. A lot of, there's a lot of silent followers. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Very. Well, moving on. Go on we've, it's time for the feature. Wow, we've arrived here limp and wet like tissue. <laughs> uh this week's feature is the Gamescom 2019 preview. Feature. Feature. Yeah, you know we like that. <laughs> this week's feature is a discussion about Gamescom. As always, you guys, you guys got in touch to share those dreams and hopes to add a real personal touch to this story. Not so easy when you stood up on the big pyramid, is no, it? No, I got a bit scared. <laughs> Knees were shaking. The fans could hear that. I think they thought I was shivering because of the bunker's cold, but it was actually your knees knocking. Was it? Yeah. (laughs) 
Well, speaking of the uh, speaking of the bunker and uh, and what state it's in, before we kick off, a concerned fan, Mrs. I, got in touch to say, "Welcome home, boys. Hope you've not had any leaks in the bunker." Well, we can rest assured you've been keeping the maintenance guy happy this week. And uh, but I haven't. Mumsy has. Oh, really? There's been oh, while you've again. been away. Not again. Every tradesman in town's been round. Has been a leak. There was an electrical breakdown. Um, although he came around to fix an electrical breakdown, and it just all I could hear in there was like a, a loud buzzing noise. And Mumsy seemed to be happy. I think she'd maybe play one of those electric shock games or something. Was she? Yeah. He liked what he was seeing, though. He encouraged her to do it more. Really? Yeah, Ed, Eddie the electrician. Yeah, Eddie the electrician. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to have a word with him down the wagon. Right. Um, Don't ask him to tell you the story. Just tell him not I to won't, do it anymore. I won't. No, yeah, I, won't. I was going to say. I'll, I'll, I'll put the... Put Give the these people the feature, goddammit. Gamescom, A New Hope. So, uh, kicking off, do you want to... Uh, who we got coming in here? Ah, well... <laughs> <laughs> well Tom you'd better you had better unlock the safe area okay look through the one way glass there he is wheel him in retro gamer Thomas nasty little biter nasty little biter just unhook the face mask and this is what he's got to say for himself great to have you back fellas me, I'm really interested to see if there's any new announcements from the big AAA developers like Rockstar. I'd love to hear of a GTA 6 or even better, a Bully 2. I'm really looking forward to seeing some more of Cyberpunk 2077. Struggled with that one, didn't I? Sound mm-hmm. like I drank half of Mumsy's liquor cabinet. I'm so <laughs> looking forward to that game. Also, I love seeing all the indie game companies and what they're working on. They seem to be part of the game, be, be the part of the gaming industry that makes me make some really original stuff nowadays. Retro Gamer Thomas, don't bite me because I've savaged your quote. Uh, but he ends by saying, I think I might watch it online <laughs> with a nice bottle of Chianti. He's a lad, isn't he? I love him. O- hopefully, though, with a retro console open and running as he nibbles bits slowly away to see what shuts the machine down. Can it survive <laughs> without this? Yes, it can. <laughs> can I eat away the controller? Prolonging the- its life for as long as possible. Yes. Uh, still well, well content retro me. gamer Thomas, uh, sit back, pour yourself a glass uh, as we move on, because some of those things you've mentioned are going to be in the feature. Um, as the dust settled from E3 and the winds blew up an air of disappointment from the king of the gaming industry's biggest show, we steady the ship and say, no, there is another. So join us as we take a look at the history and what to expect from this year's Gamescom. This year's Gamescom takes place from August 19th until August 24th, and that will again be held in Cologne, Germany. Mm. Gamescom is a surprising heavyweight when it comes to its rival events, as it currently holds the highest stats for Europe in visitor numbers and exhibitions throughout its four days, with visitor numbers reaching the lofty heights of 370,000 people in 2018. Wow. The trade fair is often seen as a place where some of the big titles shown at E3 get a deeper showcase by their respective developers. You can always expect a surprise announcement or two, especially if the tweet of presenter Jeff Keighley are anything to go by. More than 15 games publishers will premiere new content and make announcements during our opening night live. An exciting show is coming together for Monday, August 19th. Well, consider us hyped, Jeff. That is exciting. I didn't expect him to have that sort of uh, showcase of, of stuff been, for that I've opening been thinking, night. You know, is this the games industry's way of saying E three you're too expensive and bloated? We can get a Gamescom and it's cheaper, and we can do bigger announcements and get closer Possibly. to the fans. Possibly. Are they trying to bully E three to lower prices? And maybe so. Do they jump on board the second player in the expos of games to well, make them more of a threat? As we discussed there, um, it is a with E three having shown so much CGI trailers and and fans wanting a deeper look at. Yeah, but that wasn't um, that wasn't E three, was it? It wasn't they like the maniacal beast of E three. No, no, so you can't show uh, yeah, this and that. It's up to them what they. show. I always feel like Gamescom, you do get that better look at those titles because they're a little closer to release date, especially the ones coming this year, um, and we we get a few more probably. The gameplay demos that were shown to the press at E3 
a lot of the time are made public at Gamescom. So it is really worth a show uh, to keep an eye on. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at some uh, history of how Gamescom first came about uh, in its fledgling years. The first show came only nine years ago, on the 19th of August 2009 in Cologne, Germany again. The initial attendance numbers from then were still impressive, with 245,000 people attending. Some of the highlights that year they got to enjoy were a first look at Sony's uh, PSI games, Mm -hmm. which I'm sure... Did you ever dabble in that? Was that on the PS2? Uh, The PS3, I think. PS3, yeah. Uh, oh, it was iToy on PS2. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got one of those cameras. I've used the. Uh, I've got the Harry Potter games. Oh yeah. I've got the. Uh, what's it called? Uh, where is Diggs? Where is Diggs? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Anyway, that's like a fun game that the kids enjoyed. Uh, and I've, we've also got some uh, like Wii Sports, but good. Yeah. Nice. Uh, also, that you let year- that go quite easy, didn't you? We sports, but good. I mean, surely you meant to draw well, your Hyrulean suit. That is sword no, no. Threatened it, me to a like a duel to the death. I nearly fell out of love with Nintendo with the Wii years. To be honest, there was a few redeeming titles there, but it was a lot of shovelware. So I'll let you have that one. Uh, what were the few redeeming titles? Skyward Sword, one. Um, Mario Galaxy one and two. That's count those as one separate each. No, you don't. Mario Kart no, Wii. You don't. You've got to count them as one. Billy Hatcher and the, the Giant. Billy show. Hatcher and the Giant Egg. That was a GameCube uh, game. Sorry, I'm getting that confused with Zach and Wiki. It's uh, a game that no one's interested on the Wii, so we've got two. Okay. Um, no More Heroes, one and two. Counts as a series, that's three. Mario Kart Wii, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. I think I've got the right one. Um, desperate. Desperate, desperate. Anyway, moving on back to Gamescom, because we're rambling. <laughs> we're, we're doing a lot of rambling, fans, because uh, we're, we're quite relaxed this week, and uh, we hope you are too. So, uh, anyway... Well, we've had some new flora in, and I think that the, we the have, glue is... Yeah, uh, yeah that, that sort of uh, shabby chic effect floor that we've got. Yeah, well, they've glued a new one down, and the glue is very strong. It certainly is. Uh, yeah, fans were also able to see first looks of Fable 3 and the debut of the PS3 Slim which is uh, considered one of Sony's worst-kept secrets ever. I believe that leaked very uh, quickly before the show. Oh, uh, also, a bizarre fact, boxing heavyweight champion at the time, Vladimir Klitschko, got in on the action, and he came out to uh, show the Intel Extreme Masters Tournament trophy. Um, (laughs) (laughs) A little random fact there for you. But our personal highlights has to be the footage shown of Mass Effect 2, one of the greatest sequels ever made. Certainly Tom's writing the script this week. Over the years, Gamescom has helped show the gaming industry that Europe is one massive market for all the brightest and boldest new games and the competitive gaming scene. Also, George, while you sit there in your mumsy's made Nathan Drake cosplay outfit with gun holster and neckerchief made from her special leather belts and silk garment selection <laughs> that she says are from her second job, we must say that Gamescom is... What is her second job? Well, she never says, does she? But we always see that bag of stuff. I don't know. She must wear a lot of trousers. Yeah. Because she's got an awful lot of belts. <laughs> we must say that Gamescon is host to a large cosplay presence. Dubbed the Cosplay Village, this is where all the passionate cosplayers get to show off their great outfits and ideas. And we must say here at Unofficial Controller, we really love seeing how much effort is put into some of these ideas. One of this, year, this year's highlights is a Ford Mustang converted into a Transformer by the talented AJ Design. Who's cosplaying in that? What, in the... I think it's... No one's in it, I don't think. I think it's like a, a built car. Oh. Okay. okay. You don't sound excited by that. You're a Transformers fan as well. I thought I you'd be all in for that. You know, better if it was a Beetle. Mm, maybe. I was never a fan of the Mustang. Oh. One of the best sports cars ever made. Well, maybe. I just didn't want that to be Bumblebee. Okay. You're a fan of that new movie, aren't you? Bumblebee. Yeah. Do you think it's the best out of the Transformers? Yeah, definitely. definitely. We digress, anyway. That's for another topic. And, and, but to be fair, as a prequel, like, we, wa- me and we went to watch that. It's set in the 70s or the 80s? 80s. Oh. So it's perfect. Playing on the nostalgia. Generation X, very, yeah. very happy with a, with a film based on the, in the 80s. Uh, and, yeah, it's great. And it rolls straight into the first one as well. Like, I showed oh, the kids the first one. Yeah. And it was kind of like a, 
a primer for that. Mm. Plus, he's got matey in it. John Cena? I didn't notice him in the film, though. <laughs> couldn't see him no <laughs> funny you should say that get you sleep my, uh, get you slip in there my, my dad uh, speaking of uh, raffle prizes won a, a John Cena action figure and said oh you can have this for your, your boy when he's old enough he sent me a picture on a family chat whatsapp group and he said then my brother came back with why's dad got an empty box and it took me several minutes to work out we was trying to joke at. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, goodness we me. really are digressing this week, aren't we? Uh, well, well, shall we tell the fans about every week? You see, Tom gets upset that I uh, <laughs> take the mickey out of him and say that he can't remember the show's contact details. <laughs> and the, this week, oh, no, this no, week no. he decided he was going to write the script. And what a fantastic job he's done. Thank you. Uh, although, you know... If we, if we don't want to break the fourth wall... If you were Pinocchio, you'd have just poked my eye out. Listen, <laughs> if we don't want to break the fourth wall, technically I wrote this third-rate dribble. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where am I going with this? Uh, about the me sending you the script on the email. Oh, yes, of you course. You asking for I got, I got I, I digress. So I said to Tommy, you better send it over so I can print it and edit it and put it in the format and all that. And he said, oh, where should I send it to? And I said, well, send it to the, send it to the show's email address. And he laughed and then sent me a text saying, yeah, seriously, mate. What, can, what's your email address? Can you confirm to me the email address? <laughs> and then when I, spent, when I then replied to him, yeah, it's questions at unofficial control of podcast. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. <laughs> anyway... Enough of that hokey They don't pokey. want to hear about how this third-rate mediocre podcast gets put together. They don't. They it would don't. It would make them sad. Well, here we are at this year's show, and as we said earlier, Mr Keeley has our curiosity, but now he has our attention. So let's take a look at some of the developers in attendance and also some rumours from the jungle drums overheard in the village. Sony, Return of the King. With Sony skipping E3 this you year... Missed it out. <laughs> no, I didn't know you even try and do that. Oh, right, okay. I thought it just said... I'm going to speak about myself in third Tom person again. <laughs> With Sony skipping E3 this year, they are confirmed to be having a huge presence at Gamescom. So let's hope they're here to flex some of that first-party muscle and maybe show a look at Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima, and some up, uh, up-and-coming VR titles. Uh, Hideo Kojima is confirmed to make an appearance to offer a new look at Death Stranding ahead of its November launch. Um, and fresh off the press, publisher SI, uh, Sony Interactive Entertainment <laughs> <laughs> nearly got me, and developer Ilphonic will premiere the first gameplay footage of online asymmetrical multiplayer shooter Predator Hunting Grounds, which is going to be showcased on the opening, light, opening night live. Uh, George, what are your wishes for Sony this uh, this year's Gamescom? Um, what would you like to see more of? What I want to see more of is I want to see the I want to see Concrete Genie in real life, proper. I want to see. We've heard some rumblings and some people have had. A you play you would think it. that would be on the That's show floor, there, wouldn't, it? wouldn't you? Really? I'm also hoping that we see Iron Man PSVR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. All the stuff you forgot about. I know. Good job you're here. Sony's <laughs> number one fan. <laughs> Single-handedly holding up the Oriental side of the show. <laughs> um, uh, what do you think to that Predator Hunting Grounds? So it's like a it's an online multiplayer. So one of you assume in the role of the Predator. Um, I think another fire team of four people trying to survive and take it down. I, think, I love the idea. I, look, do you know what? I played the wheels off of Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, and it's, it's a similar idea, people, isn't it? Or yeah. It's a similar idea, yeah. so I think that it will be great. I think they'll handle it really well. Um, if they can tighten up and sweeten up and make the lobby area transitions to and from lobbies uh, better, yeah, it's a bit well. I would call it unreliable. Right. Okay. On the PS4, whether that's got something to do with the player count available in the world. How many people are playing it? How many people are interested in it? It was sort of a hot game for a while, and then it died off, and it was hard. Yeah, to Yeah, I, I find that with a, um, some of the older online games, it does take a while to to match make. But they did so. give it away as part of the um, the monthly releases. The monthly yeah. releases. So th- th- there might be some fans on there. That's not a problem for this new game coming out because that'll get all the hype, and everyone will be on be on mm. board with it. And hopefully, one person 
I think they've already said that one person will play as the Predator yeah. and then the other people play as the team. Uh, Friday the 13th, the team mechanic it is there because you have to get different components to get so together. So could, could to you like out. take down like Jason or was it just a case of survive and escape? The first times you play, it's definitely about surviving and escaping. Yeah. And and although it's quite a simple game, it's got quite a steep learning curve. There's only so many ways that you can hurt Jason. There's yeah. only so many ways that you can... Like, there's a so, like, I've process heard, for I've putting these things onto Environmental me. traps and stuff for him. Yes, yeah. and you have to get him into a certain state. And I can't quite remember, but there's like sections where you can get into his shack... Uh, but he has to be in a place and you have to be somewhere and just to make the whole sequence of events happen mate imagine like you trying to lure the predator into a trap and like get to the chopper and giving it all that getting the rest of the team away and you're like fight you you get out of the mud he's get to the chopper a quote from predator or commando I think it's from predator that's why I said it I I don't know I just asked yeah because the escape at the end on in the chopper. On Spoilers it, for a, a thirty-year-old film. Um, we anyway. Yeah, uh, I, I'm really excited to see more of Death Stranding. Um, That's in I'm... some ways I can't. I don't want to see too much because it's such a bizarre, it's well, even, such a bizarre story. I also I want to go in blind. If, um, we might get some news about uh, Days Gone's proper story DLC. DLC. Yeah, it seemed a good point, wouldn't it? There is a rumoured state of play for November, so between now and November, show, uh, showing a little bit of new info would be a good move for Sony, I think, at Gamescom. Uh, moving on, who we got up next? George. Oh, Nintendo. George to speak. Edna and Midna, new fan, <laughs> used Insta to get in touch and let us know. Nintendo will be showing the Switch Lite at Gamescom. I'd be very interested to hear what you think of it. They're also showing Astral Chain, the latest from Platinum Games, which should be just about complete. I'm hoping to pick that one, or if Stingray's boots later this month, but would like to hear your pre-release thoughts. Well, I showed you a bit of Astral Chain, didn't I? Because um, you were sort of saying, what what are you looking forward what to? It, what is this game? Uh, so it's made by Platinum Games, uh, famous for Bayonetta series, wonderful 101. Um, it's, a, it's an action-heavy adventure game set in, so you're like a police officer, a uh, man or woman character, and you have this like secondary. Um, I don't know what they are. They're like a, a, a I presume a, a robot or something that can fight with you. Uh, it it looks uh, apparently so the, it's like the, a robotic Pokemon. Yeah, apparently that was a little bit of influence on the idea of like you chuck this. I was you chuck this. No, it's it's serious. It's uh, it. <laughs> You send this robot out that is linked to you, obviously. Don't, don't it, you like, ever, like astral listeners, chain. dare say that we don't have our <laughs> finger on the very pulse of the gaming industry. Yeah. Um, so Astral Chain being the name, and it's that link with with this other character that you fight these enemies with. Uh, there's a whole police department to, to sort of work in with various mini-games and, and uh, train your character, learn the moves and the combat, because, as you know, with Platinum Games, they're very sort of action orientated and and have a very advanced fighting system in most of their games uh the switch light um i I won't be picking one up purely because i don't see it as um an essential replacement it it's lacking some of the features of the the main one but the price point is good do you play yours in on the screen on the tv uh as i was saying with fire emblem i've been playing a lot in handheld uh because of of home situation at the minute but um i think I think it'll be great for people who probably commute a lot or uh, younger audience who want to get a Switch but are not that fussed about playing it on mum and dad's telly in the living room. Uh, so, yeah, they're my, they're my thoughts. I, I will be picking up Astral Chain uh, at on, the end of the month. Before it gets carried away, his Amiibo collection all polished and up on the mantelpiece <laughs> with Bride. He's looking forward to seeing more of Big N's winter lineup with Nintendo's winning E3 in many gaming fans' eyes. They'll be looking at an in. They'll be looking for a more in-depth look at the aforementioned Astral Ch- uh, Chain, Link's Awakening remake, Luigi's Mansion Three, and a few other titles, including our very first look at The Witcher Three, running on Switch hardware, and basically looking like uh, 
Minecraft with a Witcher skin. <laughs> uh, Tom, you've already got quite excited and told me what you're excited to see from the big end, but, you know, come on. Hit me with one of the title that I've not heard of that they're bringing. I, I'd love to see them just chuck another surprise out there like they did with the E3 uh, Breath of the Wild sequel. Small trailer, even if they just do that. Um, Retro Studios are, are now working on the new Metroid, but what have they been working on for the past three or four years before that? Um, they're just clearing the desks away. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I'd, I'd love to see like a nice surprise from Nintendo, but they've they've got a strong winter lineup, and uh, it'll be nice to see some more of that. Okay. Well. Uh, moving on, Microsoft. Ooh. Before we dive into the uh, the big green box, we've got loyal fan Doogie McBain. He says, "Welcome back, lads. I've seen rumours of Microsoft handheld device." That clips to either side of your phone, which you can use to stream games using the xCloud. Just rumours, but I think that announcement would be pretty amazing. Hold you, hold you, hold your horses there. Let me play the role of the listener, a.k.a. the protagonist. What's this he's talking about? Well, this is a rumoured sort of... Well, it's pushing the, uh, the copyright of the Switch a little bit in the idea that you... Wait, pump- hang on a minute, no... No, no. There's nothing about the Switch's layout that's painstable at all. Detachable Joy Cons, dude. They've had, they've had clips for controllers that clip an iPad onto your phone or onto your on some gashy controllers for years now. Nintendo can't claim that. Okay. Anyway, this device it looks like it clamps your phone. With some Bluetooth I'm, controllers, and yeah, they're gonna play surely proper Xbox yeah, games on remote play or something. Surely they're gonna have to be Bluetooth because there's no like obviously people have different phones, so the attachment of them would be very difficult. Um, yeah, it, is it one of those rumors that we never see anything more of, or is it a real thing? Could be a real thing. It's a good idea. Is this Microsoft doing what they think to connect? Is this their <laughs> is this their connect to the yeah. Wii? Is this their Switch Xbox to the Switch mm. Nintendo? Is this their answer? Do you think they're going to come all guns blazing and say Scarlet's for the hardcore, but this is what we're going to concentrate on? Loads of these. There, I mean, there is a games. there is a massive casual market, so why Do you not? Think you'll be able to get Sudoku on that. No doubt. Uh, new fan, happy happy joysticks has got in touch, uh, just like you can. Uh, nice to have you back. Can we just say all these people saying nice to have us back? Well, I'll do a re re. I'll do a re rewind so you can give happy, 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 happy joysticks. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, by the way, for getting in touch. Enjoy yeah, that. It, we appreciate that. There's a lot it. of you that must be out there that listen who think mm, I enjoy the show, but I don't want to contribute. Yeah. Or I'm a bit nervous. Don't be nervous. We don't yeah, fight. We, yeah, exactly. It can be a little bit acidy at times, especially me. But you know. That's just we we, we give it to you in the Stingrays... Uh, in the Stingrays, but, Stingray, yeah, oh, Stingray, yeah, both yeah. barrels sometimes. Yeah, we do. But, you know, so anyway, give Happy Happy Joysticks the full turn of the wheel. Give them the full stage treatment. And thank you to everyone who's missed us, and we've missed you. Well, I didn't miss you because I put in a shift, but, you know. <laughs> Some of us part-timers. Uh, yeah, he goes on to say, nice to have you back. Oh, I took... Re re rewind for happy happy joysticks. They've heard their name how many times? They're they're gonna be stoked. They are. Think of all the think of all the hardcore fans that are like better follow them on Insta. True. And we, what have we you implore got? you all to do it. Where are you going with this? I don't know anymore. Happy Happy Joysticks says, Nice to have you back. I honestly would like to hear more about Gears 5 single player from Gamescom. Yes. Is it something I should get excited for, or is it uh, not very good, and that's why Microsoft has not shown a lot. Oh, it's, it's a very low-level swear word, but you're still censored, uh, happy, happy, happy. Because we are a PG podcast. Oh, I, did, I thought that was saddling the line, but there you go. We could put that in there, No, no, we? no, better safe than sorry. We For don't want Devin Zilla saying that his next meal's X. That word, yeah. Uh, well, Gears 5, yeah, I, I, I would like to see more of the single player. Uh, I played I played one to four, enjoyed them all. Four, I didn't quite enjoy as much as the other three, but uh, five looks interesting and it is going to be their 
big title for the winter, well, really. they've had that... You, you being the relevant... Uh, you being a sort of resident Microsoft guru, mm-hmm. what's this uh, Gears 5... Um, like techno trailer or whatever it is they've been flashing around. There's a uh, there was a trailer at E3 for that new game. No, no you can get you can get a game now. You can play the demo or play through a oh, demo. Right. No, I don't know much about that. You've done your research. <laughs> uh, the green me- the green machine after a strong but very lacking. I, of- I technically did the research because I do I write the scripts. Okay. Ouch. Should have worked harder on that. <laughs> yeah. The Green Machine, after a strong but very lacking of gameplay E3 presentation, is here at Gamescon also. Mm-hmm. With a special episode of Inside Xbox Direct from the show itself, Xbox are here in a big way. And as usual, are also bringing with them nearly 200 game booths to show off at a great array of its up-and-coming games, including some that will be coming to the Xbox Games Pass service. Uh, anything you'd like to see from them in particular? Gameplay footage, gameplay footage, gameplay footage of anything. Um, It'd be good to see something from their one of their new studios. Well, Gears it? is out. Yeah, it's Soon. technically yeah. So I want to see footage of that. I want to see a, a playthrough of a section of the game of the campaign. Uh, we need to hear about Fable. We need to hear about the new Halo. We it would be nice of them. Be brave of them. What with it being as we rapidly approach less than a year from its launch. To I, show us some scarlet screens. I think we will probably see some Halo footage at the Game Awards this year, uh, which would tie in roughly, will be like a year before the release of uh, Project Scarlet. Oh, I wanted to see some at Gamescom. You asked me what I'd like to see from the Big X, that's what I want to see. Yeah, I just I don't think we'll see it there. Get Phil on the phone. Big Phil. Hmm. He's, he's someone who should listen to He went to on our that stag do with us to Thailand, didn't he? Yeah. So we've got info on him. Phil Spencer yeah Big Phil don't you remember I remember him hanging out with that Taiwanese guy what I thought was a lady it was very obviously the Adam's apple yeah. was huge yeah then he poked his eye out Phil's had a few though doesn't he? He has. not drinks drinks yeah. not that <laughs> we better move on anyway before we get ourselves in deep trouble uh, Sega Phil, the... Phil Spencer from the estate not Phil Spencer of Xbox Fame no no Phil Spencer from the estate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he works with um, Hair Crowther, doesn't he? He's like his lackey. Oh, he, he works up on the estate. Yeah, games keeping. Yep. Okay. Sega, the big blue bounces back. R- write that down. Just we'll forget it, and he'll never be in the show again. <laughs> Don't forget, Phil Spencer, not of Xbox fame. I've worked hard on this script. I've worked hard. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. Sega, the big blue bounces back. In some exciting news, Sega is oh, set to show it. a new AAA title. Will it be something entirely new, or can we expect another return to the Yakuza franchise? So many options to guess from, but I'll pass it over to the man who still believes Sega will one day retake the console market. They will. George Suzuki-san, what are you hoping to see? Bakuga. <laughs> <laughs> Tom-san. Um... <laughs> Well, you know me. I want the Yakuza news, but I've, you know, a new AAA title. I can't even begin to imagine what that would be. Um, we've already been told we're getting Fantasy Star Online. We knew mm-hmm. that at Xbox yep, yep. E3, so it's not that. It's something other than that. Um, I ain't got a clue what it could be. Um, They've got a lot of IPs to choose from. No, but. A new AAA title. No, it, yeah, but it it hasn't specified that it's a new IP, so it could be um, one of the old IPs with like a, a brand new title, not like a remaster or a remake. Um, well, at that rate, I don't think it'll be Streets of Rage because we're getting four soon. <laughs> yeah, a new AAA title. If they're trying to tell me the Streets of Rage four is a AAA title, yeah, 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 yeah I'm not point. buying that. Um, what about Golden Axe RPG? It's not going to be anything like that. Do you not think? No, be not at all. Very mediocre. It's not going to be anything that anyone thinks is any good. <laughs> you heard it here first. Mark my words. Episode 19, George said that the AAA thing that Sega were announcing wasn't then going to end up being that good. Episode 20, um, Crazy Taxi 4. Dreamcast 2. Dreamcast 2. 
<laughs> oh, mate, you you would sell that PS4 quicker than you Let's could. put it this way. Get it to Stingray. If they announce Dreamcast 2, Crazy Taxi 4... Eight now. Console exclusive, we'll never do another episode of this show. What would you do if they did a Dreamcast Mini? Oh, would that count? We'd have to stop doing the show. Yeah. So you can play like the Dreamcast Mini. A topic for another day. That would be good. That would be. That would be. Well, they've, really... done, they've got the Mega Drive Mini coming, haven't they? So probably next we'll do Saturn and then Dreamcast. Uh, but mm. one can hope. Uh, can next see the Saturn selling gangbuster numbers. And if you need any info on the Saturn or the Dreamcast, please go back, take a look at our uh, History of series. I'm so proud of you. Slick. So Slick proud Rick. Of you. uh, Ubisoft. You've become a George, man. Tell us. You've literally <laughs> become a man. Father uh, one week, professional podcaster the next. You never know. Ubisoft, what they got? Well, Ubisoft were one of the 15 developers showcasing titles on the opening night live show. Plus a gameplay demo of Watch, Watch Dogs Legion. Uh, do they have any other surprises in store? Well, I know one man who's always ready with a lorry load of salt. Tom, any rumours for Ubisoft? And what are your thoughts on Ubisoft's current winter lineup? Well, it does seem a bit of a lacklustre winter for them. I know they've got the uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands sequel. There's no surprises in store. No, I don't think so. I think they've shown their hand and that's it for a while for them. I don't, don't get me wrong, I'd love to see um, Mario Rabbids uh, Kingdom thing. The, you know the, Lance, uh, the local haulier? Yeah. He's just delivered a lorry load of salt that you thought that you wanted <laughs> for us to consume with the Ubisoft section. Okay. He's wondering if he wants us to he wants us to have Back it up the drive. No, yeah. I don't think we want it here. Do we not? No, not, not yet. Not yet. Not for this. I haven't really got a lot on Ubisoft. I think Assassin's they're... Creed 18. Assassin's Creed 18. Yeah, yeah. Starring Hal in Mad Murdoch. Well, it kind of like you play as, as the assassin. actors when, <laughs> it, like the Animus, you go backstage and you're like, oh, you know, don't give me any of that fool. I want more money. And then you go through. George you know, Papard's on more money than me, give yeah, me more money. but then you go through the motorhome door and you're in character, so it's like, Hannibal, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you can see the film crew when you film the scenes. Ah, okay. I said 18, but 18 was much more hilarious. Yeah. We should have stuck with that. Should've we should. have that in there. Well, uh, I think we'd better move on from Ubisoft because I think <laughs> they've not got much, to, much else left to show. Uh, next up, we've got Square Enix. All eyes will be on Square Enix to show off that much talked about but missing from E3 show floor Avengers gameplay. Although it wasn't really well received at E3, the game still shows so much promise with a stellar voice acting cast on board, one of which is industry legend Nolan North, who had this to say about the project. You always worry about a game looks good and then you get the game and you're like, oh, the gameplay isn't actually as good. But Avengers, really, visually, it's one of the most stunning things I've ever seen. And obviously, with The Last of Us and Charted, they're amazing. But Avengers just blew me away. Well, very high praise indeed, that is. Um, George, how do you feel they can turn this around and steer the hype ship back into calm waters? Oh, uh, not even Nolan North at the wheel. He sounds very like me, doesn't he, Nolan? He does, yeah. Yeah. Was that actually a voice recording of him? He fluffed from... the line as well. Did so, he? You know, very... He, he must do voice acting lessons. He must... I yeah. want to sound like that guy on that mediocre show. <laughs> Stubble over the first couple of words, mess a sentence order up, no problems at all. Um... I've seen off-screen capture of this game. Yeah, like the the YouTube. I think it looks really good. I don't. Why? I think it looks like Marvel's Marvel Ultimate Alliance on PSP. I don't think it looks that good at all. Oh, I don't know. I think when we see some proper 4K footage of it, it will sway people's opinions a bit. As for what the gameplay itself looks like, it almost looked a bit on rails. It's sort of set on the San Francisco... Uh, is it the Golden Gate Bridge? It looked uh, a bit on rails. Not very on rails. Yeah. Are well, we gonna... I'm, 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 I'm a little bit nervous about this game. I think the, the biggest thing for them to overcome now is the fact that when they showed it and everyone was like, who are they? Like Everyone was expecting 
movie likeness of all the characters. The end game was out of the cinema. The hype was oh, building. Yeah, I'm not bothered about that. No, I'm not. I, I just think that now game... it's out, and I've kind of looked at him and I thought it actually looks quite cool. Seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. Calling it now. Calling it now. Yeah. Um. So. Again. Would you be buying it from what you've seen? No. What I want Square Enix to announce is a new Final Fantasy. Oof. Not a remake. I don't know about seven. Well, that's that's, gonna, that's what we're that, going to get. Yeah, that's going to be shown. That's going to be the Are you not excited for that? I've never played it and I'm really excited to play that. No. Nah. I don't know. Kind of. It looks amazing. It... You can't argue that. I'm not going to argue it looks amazing. Let's see. I, I just want to see a bit more of it. I want to know exactly what we're getting. I don't like the idea of the episode of content, but they're going to be long, like twenty-hour episodes, and I'll happily pay down for them. Whatever happened to Sir Don Don Donna Doyle? Dono Doyle? Do you remember him? I do remember him. I wonder where yeah. he is now. Yeah, we get sad when some listeners just go off the radar. We hope you're still listening, but it's always nice to have your input if you're still around. And Chris McClum. Yeah. Staunch, loyal, hardcore from the back in the day. OG. OG McClum. OG he- McClum, yeah. <laughs> There's his new Insta handle. Get it done. Um, we uh, we should probably move on from we Square Enix. We definitely should. Uh, Is next it my co- turn? Yeah, you take this Get one. Get out of the way. Give me this script. <laughs> it's written on some uh, toilet paper. Uh, some. Here we go. Well, there is only... This is CD Projekt Red's bit, Tom. Mm-hmm. So, well, there's only one game that we really want to see more of, isn't there? There certainly is. This is, you know... The, the great this is written, hope. It's almost like... I feel like I'm with Les Dennis. <laughs> at a pantomime. <laughs> Thanks. Well, there's only one more game that we really want to see more of, isn't there, Tom? Oh, yes, there is. No, Tom. <laughs> you asked for it, you got it. There's only one game we really want to see more of, isn't there? I'm not even going to go there. Well, the show can't move on until you do. You I'm not know doing how it. pantomime works. Oh, yes, there is. He's behind you. Well, CD Projekt Red will treat us all with a live gameplay demo of the mighty Cyberpunk 2020... What is it with this game? This is the Cyberpunk Reeves... Cyberpunk 2020... This is the Reeves planted tripwire. They weren't even going to call it 20 cents. 20 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to take the reins? No, just give me a moment, okay? I need a moment. Uh, they should have just called it Cyberpunk, but as soon as this podcast started, it was called 2077... Tw- oh, anyway, the game... I just call it Cyberpunk. The game Cyberpunk. that Keanu Reeves is talking about. Uh, it will be a stage demo, so it's going to be played by members of the development team and not, sadly, open to attendees to play on the show floor. Regardless, we can't wait to see more. On a side note, they'll also be holding a cosplay competition for the game at their stand. Oh, do you know what would be really... Not that he's got the time or the effort to do it, but if Keanu Reeves went as, like, Metal and Jack or whatever it is, just went... Oh, man, yeah, that would be awesome. Walk round... And maybe if he just got like a dodgy prosthetic nose, like super realistic. So it yeah, just like made himself look like he wasn't him, but then like a really bad. You know how like when you get like David Brent's lookalikes come and open Liddles, <laughs> and it just looks like your fat <laughs> uncle Brian's just like popped down, and he's just doing the robot dance and jumping <laughs> up on the sofa. Keanu Reeves should do that kind of style parody on himself, and then lose the Keanu Reeves lookalike competition. Yeah. That's how you sell a game. Gangbuster numbers. Yeah. Viral. Um, Talking of gangbuster numbers, Tom, we better bring in the true mastodon of the gaming world. Are we not going to talk about Cyberpunk? Or do you There's not much more to say, really. Is no, it? we'll see what we see. And it it seems such a long way off, doesn't it? Because to, to, me... to me, this is the game we've seen the most of. They've done the least teasing yeah. They've shown us from the very get go, what's and all, what we're going to get. Yeah. That's a so good point. for me, they're the only people on this list that get a pass. Everybody else needs to buckle down and give us a damn good Gamescom. They do. Agreed. So the juggernaut, Tom, I was about to wheel them in, but even. Bring him out. The mighty Tom can even delay the even mighty EA. What have they got? Well, along with a large FIFA 20 presence <laughs> and tournament, <laughs> there's one thing you can guarantee this podcast to do is it always gets EA's exclusives absolutely right. And we reckon FIFA 20 is going to be there in 
no uncertain terms. We would like to think there will be more shown of the exciting looking Jedi Fallen Order ahead of its November launch. Here's one to take with a very small amount of salt as well. As EA will unveil a new Need for Speed and it'll be shown in depth at the show. Well, wait. Hold your horses. Bear well held. Fresh off the press. Ready for uh, the seat. The new Need for Speed has been revealed. It's called Need for Speed Heat and will be released in November. I'm pretty sure we'll get to see all about it at Gamescom. So uh, any Need for Speed fans, look forward to it's that. It's not going to be as good as Need for Ski- Speed. On- Need for Screed? That's the game, <laughs> right? Where Is that what- you know, you're a tiler. Yeah. And you've got to get the screed down quick. Yeah. And then get the tiles on. Excellent. So the mini game is spread the screed, but then you've got to be precise with the tiles and make sure the Tile all... layer simulator. Sounds like a, a game for our no, long called, term called... listener Nick Nick T. No, but this game's called Need for Screed. Not Super Tiler, Pro Tiler. Is it not? Need no. for Screed. Need for Screed. EA is, I thought that'd be a subtitle. Okay. Oh really? Need for Screed. Um Pro we've tile, uh We've got Adam the Artist, uh, which you, got, say? You, you take this. You take well, this. don't forget you can win an exclusive piece of art if your submission makes submission of the month. Which we will be drawing next week. we do it on air? Yeah, we'll do it next week on no, air. How are we going to do that? Because we don't want them to listen to four hours of me arguing about, you know, this submission's better than that no, submission. No, we'll do it in our leisure and then, uh, and then we'll reveal it on the show. Next week, oh, episode 20. Big time. Uh, yeah, so what's uh, Adam the Artist got well, to say? Well, let's not just, you know, people, if you want to, you're sat there right now, you're one of those silent listeners, one of the silent but violent, as we call them, and you're sat there, you've been listening to, you've listened to every episode of the show, and you're listening now, and you're thinking, I really like this show, and I'd really love a piece of unofficial controller artwork, exclusive, well, they the ain't going to get it now. Not till the, the next month's one. Well, they might. They might win next month's, Tom. I suppose, because we have to pre-read them. So if there's something really good next week, get your pens out. Get, show us your best get work. Get down off the fence. Get your pens and crayons out and send us a submission. Because we want people to interact with the show, also be rewarded with their loyalty by having a piece of Let's face it, we like to think that they're going to pick a picture of Stingray for their wall. They're probably going to pick I would probably go for that really awesome looking Leonardo uh, artwork I've seen on there. Seen the real Ghostbusters one? I haven't, no. That's oh. awesome. We Honestly, we want you guys to pick which one you want, but um, it'd be nice if you went with the unofficial controller one but there is some really awesome I'll be picking artwork Ghostbusters, on there. but there you go I would go for Leonardo so <laughs> one or, or there's a uh, isn't there a, a real good Wolverine on there also. <laughs> yeah probably just forget ours shockers shockers and surprises because Adam the artist put a lot of time and effort into drawing all of the Meet the Village series yeah um, the Ray family portrait is awesome yeah the That's Ray cool. family portrait is absolutely banging like Deb's that. Babs is going up next week uh, we've got a few others in the part line. If you want a sneak peek, you probably should head to his website. Yeah, absolutely. Etsy forward slash comic pictures, no space. Mm-hmm. I believe it is. Um, anyway, we've done all the hype. We've done all the build up. We've done the pre. What's he got to say? I'm with Retro Gamer Thomas. Uh, one of the things I'm really looking forward to is seeing what indies are coming. They're the single most exciting thing about contemporary gaming. I'd love a release date for Dead Static Drive. Oh, I've not heard of that one. I'll have to mm, check it out. Well, so Adam the Artist, if you like an in, uh, indie, Tom is going to tell you about our indie gem. What what you got there? Yeah, I saw this the other day. Um, it was a, a Gamescom like reveal trailer uh, for a new puzzle adventure game called Weakness. Um, if I'd, I'd suggest you go check out the trailer. It's probably going to show you more than I can better explain it. Um, but it's, a, it's an adventure puzzle game where one character um, is... Death, the other is blind, and you have to work through the levels together. Um, it, with a, a, a very cool art style as well. Okay. So that's Weakness, uh, Gamescom trailer. Go check it out. Well, George, Gamescom is shaping up to be a great event, and I'm sure we have missed a few things, but there's so much happening at the show that a mediocre podcast like us, we can only talk about so much before we end up sounding semi pro. <laughs> One can dream. <laughs> 
Fuck off. Uh, but before we move on... It's never going to happen. Before we move on, eagle-eyed visitors at the show should also look out as rumours are rife that Stingray will be visiting with a vast array of retro goodies and jars of sauerkraut and some salty bratwurst knocked up by Lord Ponsilby's German gamekeeper, Herr Crowther. Oh, the legend. The, the guy who makes even a pheasant goose step. Does he? <laughs> They're terrified of him up at the estate. Uh, let's grab a last submission, though, from good old Fince the Gamer to close out the show. George, do you want good to Good to have you back. Uh, good to have you guys back. There's been a gaping hole in my life for two weeks. Uh, laughing and crying emoji. It's probably like a wince emoji. It'd be great <laughs> to see actual gameplay for some games as opposed to the CGI fest that was E3. I'm not too fussed about seeing any new games. Just some more details about the games that seem to have been coming out forever. Well, uh, Fence the Gamer, we hope we've, uh, we've touched so on... Everyone's been so nice to us, haven't yeah, they? We should they take are. time off more often. We should... <laughs> Maybe, yeah. We've got to work hard, though, here. The script doesn't write itself. Now you know, Tom, it does not. It's hard work. I wrote this. Yeah. I'm not breaking that fourth wall. Look, listen, we've put them through enough pain. Time to get to what they love to hear. If you're listening to this, it's because you skip straight here. Shame on a you. Shame on a you. Listener Stingray, when the big man makes a house call, you better be ready. These guys got in touch to show us their pickups from Stingray's boot. You can too. Just hashtag Stingray's boot on Instagram or Twitter, or email us at questions at unofficialcontrollerpodcast.com. Tom, you normally tell the people how they need to navigate on their phones to Instagram. Type in hashtag Stingray's boot, and they, as long as they're not driving can join us on this journey as yeah. they listen. Uh, make sure you go on recent as well, so you're getting all the latest pickups rather than the, the top ones. Tom, cut your jibber-jabber. Let's invoke <laughs> him. Sharaban. 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 I had to do that on my own last week. Oh, look, he's always got those um, those uh, location tags nailed, hasn't he? Yeah. Transylvania for the Castlevania collection. I Sneaky you, like for him. Just he gets there. about more than Stingray. Yeah, well, you know what? Sometimes you've got to do... Yeah. We're, so, uh, listeners should know we're doing this in a new way as well. So, we've got this up on the big screen so we can scroll through like true pros and, oh, and, yes. look, at, and look at each one together. Hopefully, to minimise Tom's Nokia 660 buzz and bopping all over the show. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyone who's still I'll just listening. double check that right now. That's off. He's probably uh, now taped his mobile. Next up, to the, we've uh, got a long time fan of the show, Nick T, 1986. Now, when I saw this image earlier, Tom, now I was very excited to see he's been and bought a gaming PC so he can play Euro Truck Simulator because he couldn't wait to play that knockoff copy on the PS4 that, if anyone's listening, is not anything to do with the Euro Truck Simulator games on PC. It's a sham, shamful copy. Cashing right. in on people's patience or lack of for Euro Truck Simulator not making it to PS4. But my initial thought on seeing that, is that his knee? Or is he more surprised than he should be about Euro <laughs> Truck Simulator 2 in that picture? I, uh, knowing the man in real life as well, I'd say that isn't his knee and we'll leave it up to the listener's imagination. I like the way he's used a macro lens to make sure his manhood's in frame, <laughs> but then somehow managed to get a widescreen lens. And looking at the, the state of that gaming PC, I reckon he's uh, he's forking out more than his wages can afford as well. It also looks like the sort of thing that you'd buy off uh, Cousin Ian. It looks like it's held <laughs> together with tape and bailer band. I like the red light in the back. It's very Terminator style, isn't That's it? That's how he's paying for said gaming PC. Is it? If you notice, the red light illuminates the window behind the TV. Oh. Very nice. Moving on. Don't come a knock in when the Euro Truck Simulators are rocking. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Radbash Gaming. Call off the dog. He's alive. And what's he got here? He's got some snowboarding game for the Xbox. Oh, my goodness. Rad. Zoom right in. Oh, God, in my excitement. <laughs> I've zoom right in. Off, but Left hand side. I've seen it. You are my hero, Radbash Gaming. You've got yourself Smack a copy down. of one of the best games ever made. <laughs> oh, Tom, please. Lord of the Rings, Battle for Middle-Earth 2, 
go back. He's trying to skip through to some shot glass with a woman on it <laughs> when really we should all be concentrating on the... The red-blooded, the heterosexual male that Tom is doesn't want to see a woman on a shot glass. No, no. He wants to see... Gloffendale and Gimli on the front of uh, Battle for Middle Earth 2 Goodness box art for the Xbox gracious, 360. Me. I don't even think we need to talk about the other games because he's going to put that in the 360 oh, look and love life. You bored me to death. Sorry, Radbash Gaming, but you know all your pickups are awesome bar the one that caused Tom to froth at the mouth. Um, what have we got here? Retro Gamer oh, I saw this, this earlier this week. It looks pretty cool. He's um, stuck some stickers on a bit of wood. Tell you what, he's, he's when he's exercising... Made a nice job of that. He's not allowed... PCSO uh, Grant Mitchell has to keep him <laughs> occupied in his cell. So he gave him these <laughs> stickers and he gave him some wood and some glue. Nothing dangerous, no cutty bits. Yeah. Because you just, know what Retro Gamer Thomas is like? He would use those stickers and a blade to make a shiv and he would... Uh, he'd have you right in PCSO. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Grant me getting Mitchell. all excited. Grant Mitchell. No, that's not his name. That's PCSO his... Ross Camp. <laughs> The naughty kids down at the park call him PCSO Grant Mitchell. It's actually yeah. PCSO Sir Ross Kemp. He's been knighted. Has he? Lord Pontebroy gave him the key to the village farmerton. Ah. So, he's a lucky man. Yes. So anyway, he's also a high-profile prison guard for Retro Gamer Thomas, and he's keeping busy. He's giving him those stickers. Uh, just pat him down, though, PCSO uh, Ross Kemp, just in case... He's made a sharp blade. We wouldn't want to see PCSO's uh, walkie-talkie being et alive. <laughs> <laughs> he only eats tech, though, doesn't he? Yeah, Retro he only eats tech, Thomas. so... So you, you're pretty safe. The jugular's safe. Sharaban's been to Konami. He gets about more than Mumsy um, and Stingray, seemingly, because he's been off to Japan to show off his Contra collection. Uh, better like that, doing my homework on air. Got very sloppy in... Uh, self-believing uh do we like our own posts <laughs> no we don't we don't do that here on this show <laughs> we've we've got enough fans uh daddy zilla thank goodness he's got the light boy he's not talking alive. devin zilla we're talking an add-on <laughs> for the game boy he had yeah uh my buddy matty till dawn brought me a light tonight and it works thanks man it'll go nicely in the collection hashtag stingray's boot Tagged Mummy Zilla and Devin Zilla. Love to all the Zillas. We found out this week through the medium of social media that uh, Devin Zilla's first day at kindergarten. So, yeah, I hope that's gone well. I hope that hope you had a good day, big man. Look at me. Touch the speaker on the radio. I'm touching it too. Fist, bump, boom. Devin Zilla rocking it out. We do that. He's cool. I'm not cool. I try and live vicariously through him. Oscat. My goodness, he doesn't collect games anymore, Tom. Looks like he collects vinyl pops. Pop Funkos. Pop Funko Pops. That's the ones. He's got re- He's got even more shelf space down there, so he's obviously thinking about adding to the collection. He's got His house is now more shelf than house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has like a trailer load. Like. He has a trailer load of uh, wall plugs and screws. He d- his wall's more raw plug <laughs> than no uh, wall. Uh, if we got here, big fan of the show, Mark.Garage.Gamers. His parents had the foresight knowing he would be an infamous YouTuber. Um, what we got here? Zelda Skyward Sword on the Wii. Nice pick. Oh, um, yes. SX, SXX. Um, on the PS3. That uh, that Shadowrun game was really cool. Can you zoom in on that? I think it was Shadowrun. I can't Run. zoom in on this device. Okay, no worries. Um, that was on 360. Like selected six apps it was like a, it was like a, one of my first dabbles into like an online shooter, which is real good. You see, that's the sort of thing that someone who grew up in your generation would say about a <laughs> game that literally is a travesty to the memory of any game that they've played <laughs> called Shadowrun. But you know, what do the bigger boys know, Tom? Did I like that picture? Better had. That's what we're here for. Welsh game hunter. He's done well. Got Silent Hill two. On um, the PlayStation Mario 2. Mario Party. Man After My Own Heart. I do own that myself. A nice box art, that is. Pick up. It? Like. What else we got? Welsh Game Hunter again. Lego what? Kingdom's Chess. I do love it when we get a mix up in here. I don't just want to see games all the time. Uh, what we got? Lego Chess Set. Harry Potter. Borderlands 2 Game of the Year Edition. That actually looks quite cool in that little card yeah. box there. Uh, look out. Like. Sharaban's been to space. 
He has. <laughs> got himself afterburner. Oh, Zenon. What's uh, the Steel Empire. It's an unusual pace for him. Arts is shoot and shoot them up. Mega Drive Genesis Collection. Who we got here? Retro, Retro Collect Collector Ray. Not heard his name in a while. Welcome back. He's had all sorts of pickups here. Tom Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Menacer for the Mega Drive, the six game set. Yeah. Tokyo Highway Challenge on the Dreamcast. Not that fondly remembered by most, but I've got some nostalgia for that. Good game. Whoa. Oh, oh what my. is that? He, business has picked up and he stormed in with an unofficial N64 pad. The Trident pad. Now you know you're gaming in the third dimension when you've got Look your Trident that. pad. It looks uh, like something you like retro gamer Thomas uses to disembowel a Mega Drive. It looks like something a cosplayer would use to make their crotch area look more presentable. <laughs> look out, Retro Visions. He's always got a one up. Most of us kids grew up with the Commodore Vic 20. Not, not Retro Visions. He's gone and got himself the very rare Commodore Vic 21. Because he's got 21k, not measly 20. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daddyzilla, Tom, you better be happy. You've he's been off cooker. two weeks in a row. You get more time off than Andy McNabb's safety catch. And this guy has been cooking up a retro storm. That's your line, but I'll steal it because you know what? All that's yours is now mine. Uh, <laughs> careful with the buttons, George. You're not safe. You just managed to <laughs> shut down the whole app. Uh, he's got some interesting shelf filler there for the PS3. Uh, notable exceptions are Heavy Rain, Enslaved, Dead Souls Riptide. I'm not going to mention the Star Trek game. Uh, what Grid, else have got Grid there? Grid 2, that was all right. Bayonetta. Yeah, Grid, Grid was a great game. Darkness as well. Tom, I've got fond memories of that game. Oh, On yeah. Xbox yeah, 360. Yeah. If you That's have. the one where like, the Mafia guy, isn't it? With the powers. Probably more likely people remember it from the game where you get two snarling demon heads to use as your weapons during yes. the game. Yeah. Not the Mafia game. Mm. That's like me describing L.A. Noir to greatest ever World War Two game. <laughs> It'd be ridiculous and a little silly. Um, <laughs> destroy all humans on the Wii. I bet that's a tall hang, hang on, hang on. Just go back, go back. Zoom top right. I can't see. Oh, it. sorry. Let me tell you that Sambio de Amiga. Is I'm the it? older sorry. one, and I've got 2020 vision. You're the younger one, and you can barely see the television. What we got more here? Dan- Danny Zilla. More tap for the Wii. I tell you what, he don't know how to stop, does he? If anyone well, ever say. wondered if Greece needed a video game, Daddy Zilla's answered, "Yes, it did." And <laughs> like all shovelware. It's got to be on What's the that arcade thing for the 360? That was one of the first things that launched. Uh, when everyone was online, all the people Oh, uh, yeah, it's like a selection of old arcade games. The original arcade games. Can I just take a moment to say, whoever that is on the box of Minute to Win It is my new uh, look guru. <laughs> He's the man I'm going to look try and look like when I get to be a bigger I boy. I think he was styled in the early 2000s, wasn't he? Hang on a minute. Fresh from his first day at kindergarten... The big man's rocked up. Devin Zilla, 13, of Instagram fame. He's got some 3DS games. How to Train a Dragon, Hot Wheels, Scribblenauts. Good game. Well done, Devin Zilla. Your standards in games as high as always. Uh, and Frozen Olaf's Quest. That sort of throws all that into question, but it's all right. Age appropriate. Um, a few Marvel games there for the Wii yeah. Hulk, Iron Man Shrek the Third looks like it's seen a little bit of sun damage that was obviously uh, <laughs> left in a window and hoped it would melt but now you're the curator of said title keep it safe keep it secret keep it safe um, Harry mon- Potter a Monster Jam game Selection. I'm always going to find time for that uh, my monster, uh, Harry Potter Lego on the Wii years Three to seven looks quite cool. Um, G Force, that game about guinea pigs that everybody <laughs> think they didn't want and they made a movie about as well. Um, that oh. Turtles game on 360 Mutants in Manhattan always intrigues me. Oh, that was made by um, is that Activision or published by Activision with all the facts weighing in again. <laughs> uh, a smorgasbord of Lego games, Angry Birds, Club Penguin. Everyone knows that we need Club Penguin back in our lives. Adventure Time, uh, Story Mode, 
Well, we've got mark.garage.gamers going with the grade Marcus Phoenix Pop uh, Funko and artistically, whether you chose to do this, I better like it as well. I sh you'll think that I don't care, and I do. And a, a book, black and white, an inside look of Gears of War 2, hardback, Tom, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the definer of quality in the book. Yes, absolutely. Every time. What we've got here, Stuck in the Pass Lane, The Joy <laughs> of Six. Now, that's beautiful. Uh, Is that so Polaroid? He makes it every week. He does the same pictures, and this is the first time you've noticed that they're Polaroid. Yeah, I catch. usually am half asleep on Stingray's boot. I must admit. Jesus, uh, Brock the eighties dude. He's been on before. He always has the good pickups. This time is no exception. He's got a bin full of wrestlers. <laughs> He's got Blu-rays coming out his yin yang. He's got a portable DVD. It looks player. like the live action version of Toy Story. He must obviously get frustrated with Grand Theft Auto V on the 360 because <laughs> he's bought it three times. If oh, you... did you realise that's the, the number one selling game this year? Grand Theft Auto V. It doesn't matter what you bring out. If it's quality, it'll rise to the top, much like this podcast. Have faith and believe. Uh, hidden and dangerous on the PlayStation. He's got some monster in my pockets there, I think, as well. He does. Uh, a woody... Amongst other things. And the buzz. I mean, he's got the full cast. He's had enough time now. Oh, you decide, do you? Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Well, sorry about that, Brock the 80s dude. I enjoyed your haul. Uh, Retro Visions. He's got himself the green screen. He's snuck in like water or smoke. He's whisked through the vape at the window. Uh, and he's, he's ran off with the green screen. Tom's literally flatlined. Uh, you know... <laughs> Oh, oh, they're quite cool, what are they? Oh, what they're of interest to you, are they? <laughs> they Let me tell you, they's... they're, they're flashy. <laughs> what are they? He's got no idea. So let me educate him. It's what's oh. known as Return of the Jedi candle set. And I'm thankful, <laughs> Mark.Garage.Gamers, for bringing this to our attention. If you've ever wondered what the Rancor, Rancor the Sarlacc, Jabba's Palace... Or even an Ewok smells like. <laughs> you need to get the Return of the Jedi candle. I'll tell you what an Ewok smells like. George Lucas's aftershave. Let's face facts. Oh, that's dark. That's Why would dark, it smell of his it? aftershave? Well, we'll leave that up for the listeners, won't we? Mm. Mm. Whole childhood ruined. Well, let me put it. To, let me put it to you this way, Tom. I guarantee you that every single one of those candles smells exactly like the colour that it is in the, you know. So that one, Jabba's Palace Green, that'll be like forest fruits. Right. Actually, they should have thought about that. They should have done the evergreen forest for the Ewok. Maybe they've just done chocolate for that. Just, you know, your normal standard smells. Yes. Vanilla, yeah. red berries. They've just repurposed them. Ezlo and Midna, new follower of the show, or at least certainly a shouted loud from the assembled masses. <laughs> And they've made themselves known to us with nice comments and posts. And we thank you Loco for that. Roco on the PSP. On the PSP. He's got the box and he's got a PSP to play it on, Tom. Mm. Proof that he has a collection of at least one game. Have we made the boo-boo? Male or female? Uh. Oh. Did you just yawn <laughs> on <laughs> air? One absolute <laughs> bell whiff. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh. Is, uh, let's uh, make uh, it a big show George when we get back we're going to promise you you do the one man show you hold it together then we're going to go on leave like the celebrities that we are and then we'll come back and we'll slap them up with a bumper show so far Tom they're looking at their watches <laughs> it's over an hour and 23 minutes they're wondering when the show's going to start and you're yawning I know I'm sorry <sighs> Unbelievable. Sharaban is back to Transylvania for some more Castlevania. Thank goodness he puts the effort into Stingray's boot because you don't. Like. Thanks. Comment. Ever wanted to co-host a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I like we're doing this live as well. Boom. So how it gets done. Uh, what's this? Tom. The Photo Mode 16. Please message me about creating any artwork for your business, you naughty little boy. But there, you've had your prop now. Uh, oh, really? I've happen. never heard of that before. The Photo Mode's been on the show. Has he? Yes, we've spoken to him off-air about the Saturn. 
and how it's programmed All for. Right, we'll I let do believe we'll let Photo Mode wants to get into gaming. Bless them, they're one of the younger listeners. Not the youngest listener, but a younger listener. Ozcat.tv. More Funko Pops of the Pokemon variety. At that time you got back in the boot, Tom. <clears throat> Radbash Gaming. He knows how to get pickups. He's got some PS1 stuff there. He's got some Justice League DVDs, I think. Oh. Tony Hawk's Underground. That's the Justice is League that, that gets trotted out when Justice know. League comes out of the cinema and this is the version you get at Poundland. <laughs> oh, I remember that. I remember going down and uh, when Fellowship of the Ring, Lord of the Rings, out of the cinema. And Groom the beard. Move out the way. Oscat's got a new pickup for his Switch collection. What is it, Tom? Chocobo. Chocobo Mystery for the Switch if you ever want to get a, a voiceover artist to <laughs> hype up your new product don't pick Tom I'm going to like it Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon that's how you sound excited about a post what else oh Sharaban he's been everywhere and he's even been on Monkey Island the cheeky little primate and what's he done it's his Monkey Island collection Tom like you can tell we've been on holiday probably thought we were dead <laughs> Oscar.tv he's done another uh, he's, he's had that in. twice now he's had that twice hang on a minute Retro Gamer Thomas hey oh is, is this him <laughs> is this him in a magazine the biter himself he's, that's awesome that's well where done. he gets nice locked one. up is Retro that his, Gamer is that his gaming setup oh my goodness that's awesome me. how many weeks has Retro Gamer Thomas been listening to the show is that his collection is that the no I know set? that's his collection have you ever been on his page yes I'm so sorry, Retro. But now he's in the magazine, so he's made it. Yeah, so. but no, he was in he was in the magazine before. This is now want to be his best pal. Now he's famous. <laughs> <laughs> this is a reminder of when he was featured in Retro Gamer magazine. Ah, this, I do remember you telling me he'd been featured in that. Yes, and that is an awesome setup. That's his shed. That's his that's cell. Cool. That's where he gets locked in at night time to it so okay. he can feast on the assembled mass of retro tat that he's okay. collected. Uh, He's been in the he's been in that magazine, but he's saying that it's the end of the shed. He's planning on moving it inside. Oh, that's good. He's allowed to have a room in the, in the big house. Excellent so news. PCSO uh, Ross Kemp is move is allowing him to move into his spare bedroom because is he, the, the, is he the, paying the, rent? The furore in the, not really. The furore in the village has died down, and I know that he's not a real cannibal, or the cannibal. And that they only need to be careful with their electronics. Right. Just keep your phones in your pocket. Don't put them on the phone, on the table, because yeah. he'll, he'll sneak off to the toilet and nibble the chip out the back. He's, he's moving his stuff inside. Him and PCSO, uh, Ross Kemp are going steady. Okay. Sounds uh, sounds like a nice setup. <laughs> no question of it at all. Eslo and Midner, the wonderful one. One of my favourite hidden gems. Wonderful 101 with a, with a Wii U Pro controller as well. Nice. You notice Tom only kicks into the podcast when it's something he knows, and the only thing he's known this or interested in is, is is this the wonderful one hundred and one. Yeah, he might as well get in his car, take the money off the mantelpiece, and go. Sharaban's been to Mute City, and there he's collected every single F Zero you could possibly imagine. Haven't liked it, better had. Hey, happy happy joysticks! Joined us in the feature. Joins us in Stingray's boot with their. Reimagines of the 16 bit classics and the snares on the Game Boy Advance. Oscat's in town. Those shelves must be buckling. If you look have at a look, the. Get a protractor out, Tom, and look at the. There looks shelf. a bit of a bend in that. You can't get a straight true reading. I that. suggest some industrial steel girder for that. I'm going to like it. Might prop his ego up, might help prop the shelf up. <laughs> Oscat.tv. He's got some. They're like gold and... Gold? Uh, there's Captain America, I think. Finals. Uh, Wolverine. I like it. We'll move on. <clears throat> you know. Oh, look out. These egomaniacs back again. This basically marks the halfway house. Oh, this you are too. joking, aren't this you? Came out. You better be joking. <sighs> I'm not joking. <laughs> oh, no. I, mean, I like that, though, because it's the great picture that Adam the Artist did of uh, the bluebird firing off down a... Miami Miami Sunset Strip. Strip. Yep. That's absolutely right. Ezra and Midna, while we've been away, became the biggest fan of the show. We appreciate you and I care for you. He's got Octopath Traveller for the Switch and he's thrown down a copy of... He's, a, lo- he's a local Chronicles. lad as well, or lady. We need to find out whether a, a, a lady or a gent. 
It's, I think it's a guy. Yeah. Um, Sharaban's been to outer space, picked up Again. Clay Lancer. Uh, he just does not stop by, and he's like Oscat, really. Who we got here? Who's that? Very pleased to announce that we'll be releasing two Mallow's beloved tribute to the Jet Set Radio franchise. Tell you what, you want a prop? Get yourself hashtag Stingray's boot. It's obviously gaining traction because people are throwing all sorts of tat in here. Panic over Radbash Gaming. He still knows how to collect some games. What have we got here? Such such great heights as NASCAR for the original Xbox. Centipede on the Atari. <coughs> Splinter Cell. He's, he's been and got himself some Skylanders tat, so he's really gone and de- he's, he's dug yeah, down he's, deep, hasn't he? Yeah. Stranger Things vinyl. Pop Vinyl Funko. Final Fantasy XII. Guide. Scary movie selection. Uh, what else we got? Miami Vice on DVD. Yeah, but the, the flawed remake film. Uh, yeah. Atlantis. On... Total Recall, the original is good. Uh, we've liked that. Bite, Bite My, my Pixel. Pixel. Not heard from them in a while. Nice to hear them back on the show. Destruction Derby 2. Not, uh, uh, not that cheap, to be fair. Destruction Derby 2. So if you pick that up for a good price, well done. Probably going rate for that these days is about 15 to 20 pounds. So you're doing well. Doing well. Bite my pixel. Look out. Dream Collections underscore retro games. Next step. Amiga 600. Boom. Job done. He's only gone and done it. Like. Top bloke. Retro gamer Thomas. He looks like he's putting that PlayStation wheel through its uh, paces, Tom. How much of it can he nibble away and still get round the Nürburgring <laughs> in seven minutes? I love that steering wheel, it's awesome. Well, the answer to that question is over half of it. Sharaban? Mmm. Ah, oh, beautiful Joe collection. Oh, That's well, good Tom's titles. awake. Yeah, I'm back in the game. Slurring his words and spilling his sure, gin all over his crotch. Radbash <laughs> Gaming with a bucket full of videos. Now, that truly is Stingray's boot. 150 VHS tapes. Now, there, Stingray's nervous. There's a man who could threaten his very existence. Yeah. Ozcat's got some PlayStation 4 Whoa, games. He that's likes. a tower of... Uh... Wow, well, PSVR games, if you look closely there. Oh, yeah. Nice. Proper bloke. No messing about. I like how I like how all <coughs> the different fans of the show support the fans of the shows by getting in each other's likes and DMs yeah, and they've good to re- see. friended each other, and that, that's beautiful. Hey, Dream collection. He's picked up the Amiga 500. He's assembling them in order, ascending as he goes. Retro Collector Ray, uh, he's picked light a Master gun System it. light gun and a few yeah. games to play with it. The like Warriors. Warriors 2 on PlayStation 2 <laughs> and The Godfather. Uh, hopefully he's already got some games tucked away. Uh, block, Block, Brock. <laughs> Brock the 80s. You might know him as Brock the 80s guy. Uh, I don't know what I know him as. Block the... I don't even know. The Suplex Machine. <laughs> What's he got? He's got uh, Rocksteady from Turtles fame. Uh, Mario Kart Wii. Is that a set of AirPods down there? <laughs> Not AirPods, the just standard. standard AirPods. Any doubt? No worries. And he's also picked himself up for those new fandangled CDs everybody's listening to. Mm. Portable CD player. Uh, stuck in the pass lane. <coughs> now, Ooh, let's okay. give Tom an education. Stuck in the pass lane. Every week, he does a nice shot of an old game or a piece of retro material and he puts on a frame which is very similar to a Polaroid and then at the bottom writes something to do with the game. Normally a nicely worded pun. This one has got F355 challenge on the Dreamcast and underneath his written challenge in exclamation mark. Tom, this is our loyal listener stuck in the past lane. This is how he posts. Excellent to see. <laughs> <laughs> Oscat, he's had them on. That. He's had them on. We've seen that. He probably got worried he's that there was no it. show last week, and he probably thought, "Is it because I ain't done enough in Stingray's boot?" <laughs> so just give him cutting some slack. Masters of the universe. Excellent look. to see uh, some more. Pop we ought to get that out of Stingray's boot one day. Have a rent of that. We should. Uh, what's Boba Labor doing? Boba Labor asking for recommendations for the Vita. I told well, him he's asking some, the right man. And he's, hope you reply. Hopefully he's gone and got those. Daddy Zilla, the week that was that never was. What's he got here? Mafia, Fallout, some other games. Um, Retro Visions, not a Nick Cone this time, but looks like they found themselves some Atari computer carts. There's the Ray family. That's great, that. I love that. 
We haven't liked our own picture. I'm liking that one. Yeah. It's one of our most popular uh, posts, though. In yeah. fact, if only everyone that listened liked, if only everyone that listened followed, we would be the. We'd be threatening. Well, we're in that sad world, aren't we? Where we have that like like for like, follow for follow, and then you follow them, and then I see Finch again made quite a good post about this of people following you. And then you follow them, and then they will follow you. It's like, what's the big deal? That's like, what I've been doing. It, yeah, but we don't do it on that scale. We <laughs> I only, haven't we been only doing do it at all. We only do. Yeah, that's why you look at us. We've got like loads of followers, loads of following. And why do people do it? It's like some ego trip. Weird. Well, maybe it is. Well, whatever. I don't get it. Okay. Um... Well, regardless of that, let's get on with Ash Events, and they've got this wonderfully That's awesome cool, isn't it? Yeah. pink Xbox original that they've made with the word chill on it. It lights up. That's very, very cool. Oh, and a, and a blue one. He's got it in blue. Yeah. That's a Sega on top of it as well. That's beautiful, that is, Ash Event. Well done. Great work. While he's there, though, he's going to slot Mark Echo's Getting Up. Uh, he's done a great picture of that next to some real life graffiti. Yeah, that's has cool. to say, Ash Event, that's that's virgin on that's that's virgin on artwork. That you yeah. want to steady on, um, almost too cool for school. Daddy Zilla, that he's you. that excited about them. He's got to take him in the car. I tell you what, Daddy Zilla, Daddy Zilla is literally throwing himself on the hand grenade that is shovelware on the Wii. <laughs> he's buying it all so we don't have to. He is. Farming simulator on there. That's for PC. WWE 12. Devin Zilla and my lunchtime pickups. Oh, I feel bad now. But he got the chew rings. Chew key ring there. Excellent. Miss Nintendo fans bought a sofa. Literally. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. He only has as well. Uh, nice pad, by the way. That's, a, that's Very a, cool. Yeah. That's our resident Australian listener. We hope you enjoy lots of gaming on that. Yeah. Uh, Daddy Zilla... So he traded with someone and uh, asked him if he wanted an Xbox One. Daddy Zilla. Careful on the hob ring again. He's not daft, is he? He said yes. And now he's the proud owner of another console. Uh, Sharaban's been down the Samurai Spirit Dojo, got himself some Samurai Rival showdown. Dojo of uh, Red, Red Dragon Race. Yeah. So I'll tell you, there's too much. intangible variant if you're listening. Well, that's his secret code name, isn't it? We know you as Red Dragon Race. Get in touch. I'm a bit worried about you. Uh, Daddy Zilla, I mean, he's picked up every generation of console over the last six. Uh, Where six does he decades. put all this stuff? He must have like a, a shipping container in his front yard. Maybe he does. Yeah. Maybe he's got a small mansion that we don't know about. But he's picked up a PlayStation Three, an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, a PlayStation Two. So looks like another PlayStation Three. Some kitchen roll, uh, a PS One, <laughs> and some Three DS games. Uh, great and pickups in well. there. Great, great pickups. Uh, what we got here, Ozcat? You worried about your shelves? So am I. Um, what's he got to tell us? He's just adjusted his shelves, but he shared that picture with us. Blue Canyon Games, like latest little care package he's sending out. Oh, look out! Ozcat on the Labo. Every see. single bit of cardboard from Tesco's this afternoon, and sent us a picture of it. Arranged in various different controllers. Uh, Sharaban's been down the calf and got some Darius games. Is that the full turn of the wheel? It is. It is because there's Oscat's handheld splayed out. Sigh of relief for Tom. <sighs> Thing is, though, Tom, if the listeners, the loyal listeners, wanted to get in touch and put their retro pickups or new pickups in Stingray's boot, how would they do that? So go on to Instagram. Uh, we photo and make sure you remember the hashtag Stingray's boot and then we'll read it out next week. Mm. Well, with lack of show, Tom, Stingray had to go down and sign on this week just to make sure that the Federation Against Copyright Theft didn't screw him from his earnings. How does he keep drawing that money from them? Technically, he's unemployed. Mm. For 27 years. He spins a good yarn down there, so I hear. He doesn't talk. Does he not? He just sits there awaiting... We know this, because for Stingray to talk would be for Stingray to implicate himself. Ah. So okay. he goes down... Look, Maureen down the job centre in the village, she knows the crack. 
She sorts him out with his gyro and then sends him on his way. He gives her videos FOC. That's free of charge. No questions asked. Under the front seat, where mm. the older titles are. Ah. More into fan of the older title. Tom, he's down the bottom of the yard. He can't finish his night's work until he's screened up the drive like only a third-rate sound clip can do. <laughs> and with that, here he comes. It's time for a peek in what we affectionately call Stingray's boot. What's nestled between some counterfeit mountains and a dodgy pumpkin part of the this week? So these are the new release highlights for this week, August 12th to August 17th, 2019. Listeners, these are out on digital, physical, or will be by the time this podcast is in your feed, but could be region dependent. Tom, the springs are settled, the boot has popped, that third rate, but rather expensive sound clip has ended. Well, we've spent most of the budget on that, haven't we? We have all the budget. Lord mm-hmm. Ponsilbroy. He wasn't very happy when he found out we'd spent his inheritance <laughs> on a 20-second clip. Uh, Moving on to slightly better news, Tom. What's your first dip? Don't uh, let it be a game. It's your turn okay. to pick a TV show. Well, or the TV show we're going to go with this oh. week, because I've dug out, I've had a rummage. It's quite a thick box, cardboard box. It's the BBC or CBBC's version of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, the TV series. Oh, I wonder where that idea came from. That's a great one. Um, you will have to like record over the bit where they shave Aslan because I still I don't like that. It's it's a, a sad sad story that Tom's more of a hirsute gentleman. Never been a fan of the female shaven cat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you t- what are you picking out for your video rental? Don't know. Oh me. Yeah. Oh. Tom, you've picked out that. It's got Voyage of the Dawn Treader, Prince Caspian. Well, that's going to take us all week. Is it? Oh, okay. yeah. It's we're going to do the whole... The the wardrobe, we're going to binge the whole it's the whole CBBC produced series. Last time it was Moondial. This time it's on the Witch in the Wardrobe. Uh, if it's Box of the Lights next week, he needs to stay away from my shelf. It's where his inspiration is coming from. <laughs> Tom, dig in and dig out something for that cronky old Nintendo console you call the Switch. Friday the 13th, the game Ultimate Slasher Edition on the Switch, out August 13th. Been out on everything else, including yeah. CFAX, finally makes its way to the Switch. For the first time ever, you will have the opportunity to play as Jason Voorhees, the most famous killer in horror. Stalk your prey, ambush them whenever you see fit, and strike fear into the hearts of so many hapless victims as you become the legend himself. Friday the 13th, the game will include a variety of kills, new and familiar, that will help you set the tone for Jason Voorhees that you want to be. You'll even get to unlock various Jason incarnations from the movies. Jason will be equipped with a terrifying array of abilities, giving you the control of a hunter at the height of his game. These are his wo- these are his woods, and, and he words. <laughs> and he knows them all too well. Jason will not only feed off the fear of his victims, but will become stronger as the night progresses. The darker the night, the more terrifying Jason becomes. Okay, we'll just... we are going to have the same mummy mummy this week, so we'll just clarify that. Um, but you are going to take the actual reading of this. Yes, because you've already dragged the show on one hour and 42 minutes longer than it should do, Tom, because I want to get off. No Man's Sky Beyond, PC, PS4, Xbox, August 14th. Beyond will contain three major updates rolled into one larger free release. These changes are a mixture of features we've been dreaming of for a while and a reaction to how we've seen folks playing since the release of Next. As an expanded online experience will bring a radical new social or multiplayer experience which empowers players everywhere in the universe to meet and play together. Meanwhile, VR support will bring the entire game experience to life in virtual reality. Grab the joystick and thrust it to fly your starship over an unexplored alien planet as you peer out of the cockpit at the view below. Reach into your backpack to grab your multi-tool. Touch it, touch it to switch terrain to terrain manipulation and carve out intricate shapes with unprecedented control. Play multiplayer and casually wave to your non-VR friends or fist bump your VR peers. Anything's possible in No Man's Sky next or any other update. Any soon will be ready. And wait, is an in- what the hell am I talking about, Tom? I'm so excited. I've you stumbled are. over my words. Let's park it there. I think I've just about You've got it off. You, half your head's in the VR headset. Let's, <laughs> let's slow down. 
Oh, come on, please. The fans and I, we just want to go and play Beyond. Let's move that on. That was my mummy mummy, and if anyone's interested in knowing, it was also Tom's. Yes. What's next? Uh, Emma, Lost in Memories on the PC, Ooh. out August 16th. Yes. Emma, Lost in Memories is a 2D puzzle platformer game in which all the platforms and walls start disappearing progressively as you touch them. Think, strategize, run, jump and feel in a surreal, poetic world where everything fades away. Can't compare to Quintillion Planets and virtual reality support, can it? Not really. Uh, like a shadow. What's the last one on there? Zeus Begins on PC, August 16th. I honestly thought this would be your mummy mummy. Looks like a third-rate uh, Golden Axe clone. Okay. Help the young Zeus to come back to Olympus and defeat Cronus. Cronus ate all of his sons, but Zeus escaped with the help of his mother. He trained so hard in combat to defeat all the enemies that Cronus sent to him. Uh, fight with mythological creatures and titans across Greece in a beat em up game. Tom, we've got to the end of the show. It's time, and only right and polite, that I should ask you what you've been playing. Uh, well, I hope to sort of play some more of Fire Emblem Three Houses. I don't think I'm going to finish that anytime soon because I've heard it's pretty massive. Uh, and I might even download No Man's Sky and um, and delve into that world. You're shaking your head. It's not. It's not for me, is it? Or you can ask me what I'm going to play. What are you going to be playing? Well, with that, listeners, he's gone anyway. He's got his head in the VR headset and he's lost forever to the world of No Man's Sky. That's all we have time for you this week, listeners. And as always, thank you for your time and we look forward to the pleasure of speaking to you again next week. Until then, happy gaming. And remember, there's nothing wrong with being given the unofficial controller. It's what you do with it that counts. Cheers, George. See you, Tom.